morning. Good morning. It is great to see everybody this morning. What a beautiful morning. And I could sense that it was heating up after I was outside in the evening. It just seemed like it was getting warmer and warmer. So I was excited about that. And then to see the beautiful sunrise this morning. So we're excited for everything that's going to happen today. We're excited that the youth are going to be giving testimony today. So pray for them that the Lord will give them the words to say and, and have an anointing on that. And uh, we have uh, Pastor Dave Hibbison here to to uh, bless us this morning with his word and guide the youth. He's been ministering to them for, for quite a while now, and we're so thankful for him. And so we're, we're excited to hear what he has to say, and also we're excited for Pastor Dave, who is going to be at... Um, Pastor Dave Hibbison's church this morning as a guest speaker, so he was excited about that as well. So pray for him. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, for all of us and uh, to hear um, the Lord's word and to worship together this morning. We're excited. I'd like to, if you would please stand, I'd like to share some scripture out of John 14 or John 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things have I commanded, I command you so that you will love one another. And I like the verse in 15.5. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in you, he it is that bears much fruit. And so, you know, the, the abiding is such a beautiful word that we can be close to the Lord and, and abide in the Lord and, and, and also to have this rich fellowship this morning. We're so thankful for that. We want to welcome those who are watching online and uh, we're thankful that you're with us. So thank you for joining us. Um, let's go ahead and, and let's sing, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord.
Father, we thank you and praise you so much for this time to be together this morning. We want to lift up those who are ill this morning. We especially lift up Michelle this morning. We miss her a lot, uh, not being on the piano, but we're thankful for all she's done to help this worship team and our church. And we pray for a special blessing on her, that you'll heal her lungs, Lord, and, and that she'll get relief soon, Lord. We thank you and praise you for her, and we lift up others that are healing. We lift up Mike Mooney to you this morning, Lord God, that you would continue the healing and give him strength, Lord. And thank you for helping him through this difficult time that he's been through. And we lift up um, Pastor Dave to you this morning. Dave Vogel, uh, who's away, pray for a special anointing and blessing on him as he's preaching this morning and blessing that body over there near Monticello. We thank you, Lord. And thank you for Pastor Dave Hibbison, Lord. We thank you for his willingness to minister. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done in him and his family, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that, that you've brought him to us to help us and to minister to the youth and to all of us. We pray for a special blessing and anointing on him this morning. We thank you. And Lord, we thank you for this time of worship, Lord God, that we can worship you and help us to really think about the words, Lord, and, and to honor you and to be touched, Lord, each one of us. There are many here that are hurting physically, emotionally, and spiritually, Lord, and there's financial needs. We pray, Lord, for each one that not one person would leave here without being touched this morning. And we ask for a special blessing on the youth, Lord God, as they come up and share. We thank you for them, Lord. We pray for their future, Lord God, that you would bless them, Lord. We thank you for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. 
the announcements for Youth Day. We have our... Have our connection card, which is inside your bulletin. We want you to fill that out just so that you will be able to connect with you. And you have prayer boxes, also ways that you can be involved with the church. And then you can place it on the offering plate on your way out. We have the Bongolo Hospital, which is our Christian and Missionary Alliance Hospital. It's located in Gabon, West Africa. We took the monetary donations from February 13th through February 28th to purchase medical supplies online. And it's exciting that we raised over $1,400 were donated by the So the medical supplies in that amount have been purchased online and shipped to the designated location. We want to give a special thanks to Becky Onrood and Tara Fogel for their efforts in executing. April 15th is the Good Friday service at 6.30 p.m. And April 17th is the Easter Sunday on April 17th. So the early outdoor service would be at 8 a.m. Then we're going to have an Easter brunch at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m.-ish. And then we're going to have another indoor Easter service at 10.30 a.m. And that's all we have. So we can dismiss the kids to Children's Church. Thank you for such a wonderful church family that we get to be here with. Thank you that we get to celebrate our youth and that we have such a wonderful program for us to learn in. Thank you for everything that we've learned, for all the wonderful opportunities to go and help others at Big Sandy Camp and at Pizza Ranch and all the different things that we've done. We want to pray for all those who are out there who are hurting and who need you right now, Lord. And we pray that you give us strength today to share our testimonies with this church congregation and our church family. Amen. Amen. We're going to share a song with this morning for special music. You know, um, Adam and I quickly put it together here when we found out that Michelle wouldn't be able to come this morning. It's one of my favorite worship songs. It's Psalm 5. It's pretty much right out of scripture. I just love this song. And you're welcome to sing along with us, Psalm 5. You can turn in your Bibles or whatever you want to do on your phones. And, or just sing along or hum or whatever you want to do. But let's just worship the Lord as we do Psalm 5.
smooth slideshow and a little bit of music, and then we'll get to hear from our youth. Amazing this third time around. I mean, it was, it was 
But one of my favorite things there was um, just hanging out with everybody here and listening to the Oh, my name is Brady. Um, you get the wireless um, mic. It's on the. <coughs> my name's Brady. My name is Susie. My name is Maria. My name is Sarah. My name is Lily. My name is Grace. My name is Kira. And I'm Eileen. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we did differently this year at the youth group was I uh, want to make sure that their attention was with us all the time. So uh, we have a we're starting a new tradition, if you will, at the youth group that we collect our cell phones. Yay! Yay. Get uh, two of you to get the bags, if you want. This is not, you don't have to do this, but put your bag in your bag. Put a cell phone, in, your cell phone in the bag, and you will get them at the end of the service. Sure. Now what I'll do is, uh, if it works out well enough, I'll have them lined up here at the altar. Please take your cell phone and not the best one. <laughs> So Julie Bodum is a good helper at our youth group and we love having her, but she's in Lake Florida. She's off where it's warm and so she wasn't able to be here today, but she has this lovely thing that she wrote for us. So I'm going to read that. About Avalanche at Big Sandy 2022. It was about significance and finding your true self. Pastor Braden. The cool dude who led the worship music shared his testimony about living two lives in college. He came to learn that God is not keeping track of our accomplishments, but rather he's interested in our heart. He reminded us that through our that through Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 through 12, Jesus consistently accepted people from every level of society. God has the power to change any life for the better. Jesse Paul Smith, keynote speaker, shared his miracle story. He had climbed the ladder of worldwide success as the lead dancer for celebrities such as Justin Timberlake and Rihanna, only to become suicidal with spiritual emptiness at the height of his career. A stranger talked him off a bridge at his hometown of Superior, Wisconsin, with the message that significance is not found in what you do, but rather in who you were created to be. God has a better plan for him, and God has a unique and wonderful plan for each one of us. And how grateful we can be in knowing that forgiveness is forever. When we talk with Christ, our past sins and mistakes no longer define us or weigh us down. Lamentations 3.23, his mercies are new each day. Great is your faithfulness to me. So embrace your total and quirky true self. Read the word of God. Pray and worship daily and spend time with your church family. But she had some fun memories from camp. Susie and Maria Larson correctly answering Bible quiz and music questions that put us at the front of the food line again and again. <laughs> Hope being a finalist in the Net Gets Gorilla game with the one, two, three, go. <laughs> Julia's inner beauty sharing from her heart and stunning, bright, beautiful, blazing blue eyeliner. <laughs> Rainy's peppy dancing during the church clap song. John's easygoing sense of humor with the mystery texts. <laughs> Thank you, TCA, for supporting the youth all year and especially at camp. Julie Bodum. Um, sure. I thought that winter camp was really fun this year, and I had lots of fun hanging out with the people who came. We had some fun messing around with John and just 
everyone was there. The music was wonderful and powerful and made me cry a lot. And it was just a wonderful experience to go and to be there to grow with church family. And I'm having lots and lots of fun with this new, this new group of friends that we've made in youth group this year. Um, so it was my first year going to Big City Camp. I had a lot of fun. I got to know more of like our group, um, and like what they what they talked about was pretty. It was really powerful. Of like, um, like yeah, what she said in the um, paper. But um, and yeah, um, I had something now I forgot it. But <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Winter camp was a lot of fun this year. We all really got to know each other, and we had a lot of fun, not just at winter camp, but in this whole winter and summer, really getting to know each other and becoming a really good group of friends. And we all get along really well, and we're into the word, and we want to learn more, and we enjoy being with each other. And winter camp was really good, and I think we learned a lot and grew closer together. Well, I ended up, <laughs> but I asked a question at the, at the voters meeting and ended up volunteering, taking these kids to camp. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But, um, uh, and after having spent four times of going with the ladies to camp, this was my first experience of, youth, of being with the youth kids, and that makes camp altogether different. It was truly camp. <laughs> but our kids, I enjoyed all the kids that were there. I, our girls were, were fantastic. John was so open to them. We had, after each session, we had what we called cabin talk. So we discussed what was talked about at our sessions and um, the kids would all relate to the answers and stuff like that. And some of their answers were very unique and very heartwarming. Um, I felt that I grew a lot closer to some of these kids that I've known all the years that I've been here. But um, camp is wonderful. Our kids are beautiful. And they all learned and absorbed all of it. The music was fantastic. It was all bass for the kids. So it was a little more than what I like. But the songs were fantastic, and they were very heartwarming and stuff. And I think they touched everybody in some way. I know we had everybody crying at one time or another. <laughs> and then when we'd get back to our room, we'd sit and talk. Oh, and I want you to know that John is very, very strong. The girls told him how they hated football, and it was a boring sport and they found no purpose in it and all he did was sit there and bite his tongue so he wouldn't say anything because <laughs> he was looking forward to the football game on Sunday. Thank you. Well, thanks for the youth stepping up and uh, speaking and introducing himself and greeting. Did everybody get greeted this morning? Okay, great, great, great. Give our, give our youth a hand. Um, so if I feel a little off this morning, I uh, just flew in from California late last night, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> My wife warned me not to use that joke, but since she's not here, I can go ahead and do that. Um, that was a part vacation, part church uh, business out there in California. You're welcome for bringing this warm weather back. It was, uh, it was 63.
three degrees in <coughs> California. And now I get back and here it is, it'll be 33, I think, later on today. So uh, nice sunshine. And it's amazing what the Lord is doing, uh, not only here in Clearwater, but out in California and all points between. But one of the things that was uh, encouraging for me was um, I was sitting back a row or so from a, a young man, and he had his Bible open, uh, and I think he was in Jeremiah. I didn't, didn't want to disturb him or anything. But he was taking notes in his Bible, and it was very encouraging to me to see some, a young person like that uh, on a plane using their time to get closer to the Lord. And that's kind of what we're trying to do in youth group, is uh, trying to get them a little bit more interested and have a hunger for the Word of God. So this morning what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, Matthew 5, 1 through 12. This is what we just got done doing. At the beginning of the year we did Psalm 23. And now we've gone through the Beatitudes. Uh, that's not actually in the Bible what it's called, but it's kind of a, a, a catchy term for that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring the Lord into this, the Holy Spirit, and we're going to go and see what we've been learning about what it means to be blessed. So Father God, Thank you for the youth that they're, they want to be part of your kingdom. They want to be involved in your kingdom. And I pray the same for everybody that's here today, uh, that's in the sanctuary, and those who are online watching, that they would be engaged in your word and in your kingdom. Because we know, Lord, if we're not engaged, nobody else is going to be. And the kingdom of God is not going to spread unless it's through us. So Holy Spirit, come get me out of the way. Speak through these words of Scripture as Matthew recorded them under your inspiration. And may we be inspired this morning by this text. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. That was good. We'll work on that as we go through the service. To be engaged is to say, yeah, amen. Amen. Very good. Okay. So, um, Go ahead on that, the first slide there. And Matthew records it this way. He says, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, and he had just gotten off the boat from the Sea of Galilee and, and came into that, that, that surrounding area, and he went up on the mountainside and he sat down. A lot of preachers just they sit down on the ground. And I'm not going to, because you wouldn't be able to see me. And that would be okay. Amen. But, you know, <laughs> how God works, and you get engaged. Isn't that great? And his disciples came to him. Now, when he says his disciples came to him, it just wasn't this well. Thousands had come to meet Jesus and listen to him and hear him speak about what the kingdom is like. And so he began to teach them. And he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now we have to stop right there. So what does what what blessed mean? It's a lot more than just being happy. Now, happiness is based on circumstances. So who has a thousand dollars today, Arnold? That I can take away from you. That would be a circumstantial deal, and you probably wouldn't be very thrilled about that, would you? Because I'm not giving it back. I'm giving it to the church, obviously, yes. So, or somebody steals your car. Are you happy about that? Probably not. Even when you get it back, you get out through all the insurance stuff and, you know, all the police reports. And pretty soon, you're not feeling very blessed. Because being blessed... Bless you. Being blessed is being fully satisfied in God through Jesus Christ. That's the best biblical definition of blessed that I've ever heard. Being fully satisfied in God through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who's talking about this. He's telling the people, us through Scripture and those who are sitting there, that you're blessed because you're poor in spirit. But what does that mean? Does that mean that you're all whiny about stuff? This isn't going to work right, or, or you know, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get part of the fish and the bread that was being, being distributed. What, what does that mean? Poor in spirit. Well, I'm glad that you asked, because being poor in spirit is, is being humble, as opposed to being proud, as some of the Pharisees, religious leaders were, 
in Jesus' day. They were proud about who they were and how they served God and, and all the commands that they kept uh, as best as they could, but most of the time expecting more out of somebody else. But poor in spirit for us would be, I'm humble and I need you. I need God. You need God. And He gives Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus, the worst day of your life can be a blessed day if you're fully satisfied in Him. Because in Jesus, everything is good. Everything is holy, not perfect. Don't, don't misunderstand me. Holy can be separated from whatever circumstances you may be in. So the running joke at, at my church is, we know that Jesus is coming back immediately is when the Vikings win the Super Bowl. <laughs> right? Now, that's a circumstantial deal, isn't it? We know that Jesus is coming back way before they get to that. <laughs> but blessed are those who are, who are poor in spirit. And that means that I'm just thirsting for God. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Does that mean that we have to wait until we die to go to heaven? No. Being poor in spirit means I need you today, Jesus. March 13th of 2022, I need you more than I, do, than I did yesterday. And the kingdom is here. The kingdom is yours, says Jesus. Now, think about the people that he was talking to. They're all peasants. They're all lowly as far as their, their culture and their, and their place in life. Had gone, thousands of people had come to hear this, this new rabbi. He was a little bit different than all the other, he was a lot different than all the other rabbis. And they, but they said something, but he teaches differently. He teaches as one with authority and not condemnation. Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. When, when we mourn, it's because we've lost something or someone. But if you're fully satisfied in Jesus Christ, that mourning isn't going to be like people who don't know Jesus. In fact, the Bible says that we don't mourn when somebody loses, we lost somebody because of what we have and we're assured of. We're sure that we're going to see our loved ones who are saved by the power of Jesus Christ. So when we mourn, we're going to be comforted. One of the things I noticed when uh, we were doing part of the vacation part was we went uh, up to the observatory in uh, West L.A., I guess it was. And, and then we went down to the uh, Hollywood Boulevard of the Walk of Fame. You know, they had stars and all that kind of stuff. And we were walking along. But there was something there that I wasn't prepared for. Many homeless people are on Hollywood Boulevard. They don't have a star there. They're sitting in the doorways, or they're just sitting on the street. Isn't that sad? And I mourn for them. Because they're missing something. They're missing Jesus. And I blew it, I'll be honest. I mean, you guys supposed to be vulnerable, as Jesus was. I missed an opportunity to sit down and talk to one of those persons. I blew it because I was, we were in a hurry to get somewhere. And this is an excuse. But have you ever driven in L.A.? How many have ever driven in L.A.? Don't ever do it again. <laughs> it's off. It's the worst of it. You got six lanes of traffic going 70 miles an hour, and it's just packed. So it took forever to get anywhere. And so we were, we were in a hurry. And I, and I got about four blocks down, got to the car, and I just, the spirit was, was it, you know, you blew it. You missed it. And so I sat there right then, and I just, Okay, Lord, I'm going to pray for this person. I mourned for them. And I prayed that they would receive Jesus. Jesus said somebody else that's maybe more attentive than I was at that specific time in history that would be able to comfort them. And I know when, when that happens, and I'm pretty sure it did because Jesus always answers our prayers. Amen? Amen. Okay, next one. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So what does it mean to be meek? 
Scared? Timid? Oh, oh, geez, don't, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I'm just, you know. That's not what meek means. Meek means somebody who's humble enough to acknowledge that, but strong enough to say, I'm okay in who I am in Jesus. And, and it's that type of person or persons that will inherit the earth. Isn't that cool? All the lowly people that were hearing this message from Jesus have been cast aside. And you're not good enough because you haven't kept the law. Or you're not good enough because you were born into that family. And you're not good enough because, well, you're just not good enough. And those people are hearing this and say, wait, I'm kind of meek. I don't, I don't really stand out in front of anybody else. And, and I'm not on the street corner and I'm praying all out. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm kind of, kind of hoping God shows up today. You hope that God shows up today? Yeah. You hope that God shows up tomorrow? Yeah. And in your heart, you're going, I want God to show up every single day because I hunger and I thirst for righteousness. Now, does righteousness mean that you're perfect? No. Not even close. None of us will be perfect until we get to the other side. If you hear a pastor say, I've got it all together, and you don't, it's pity. Mourn for that guy or gal. Because they don't get it. Because we will never be perfect this side of heaven. But we can be righteous. We can be right with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that look like? To be right with God? Does that mean you've got to keep all the law? All right, I want everybody to go home this afternoon before you turn on the NCAA tournament or whatever tournaments are going on. And I want you to read Leviticus and Numbers. And I want you to keep all of those laws. Then you'll be right with God. Amen? Oh, good. Somebody said no. Thank you very much. Because that doesn't, that's not what it means. The thirst for righteousness, the thirst for being, being with God is, I don't have it all together. But I want to be an inspiration and a light to people around me. When you hunger and thirst to be right with God, you think he's going to say, no, nah, no, nah, you're, you're, you're not good enough. You think God says that? What does he do? You betcha. You betcha. He's, he, God's Norwegian. I know he is. <laughs> You'll get that later on while you're sitting around and all. You betcha. God's Norwegian. Or Scandinavian. I don't know. you got a mix of people here. I know. I'm going to get in trouble. All right, Kathy. Okay. But when you thirst for righteousness, you will be filled. God gives that promise. Jesus says so right here. Think about that. The people that were sitting there that never heard the good news. All they heard was condemnation. You're not good enough. And you're not strong enough. You're for the wrong family. That's all they heard all their lives. And now, here's this crazy rabbi sitting there. Because that was important. Most of the other rabbis are up in there. You know, they're, they must have a back race or something like that. They're sitting out there. They got their chest. They're all puffed up. Jesus hated that. That's why Jesus just you know, Is this disarming? No, it's weird, isn't it? And you can't hear me because I'm kicking the table. So, that's what Jesus was like. He was just like what everybody else except Jesus, Lord. But he cared for everybody and he understood that they were hungry. And they were hungry for truth. They were hungry for truth. What was true? You have to keep the law in order to be saved. That's not true. You have to do everything right. Otherwise, you'll never get to heaven. Is that true? It's far as thing from it, isn't it? Hunger and thirst. To be right with God means that when you look at Jesus, and you give your life to Him, God looks at you and He sees Jesus. That's the perfection that we have to look forward to. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Matthew 5, 7 through 8. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Merciful. Have you been merciful to somebody that's wronged you? So here's the definition of mercy. Getting what you don't deserve. Okay? Getting what you don't deserve. So if somebody stands in front of a judge 
And the sentence for that specific crime is, is 15 years. And the judge looks at that person and he or she says, you know what? I'm going to have mercy on you. You're only going to get two years instead of 15. That's mercy. No, the person that's standing there is sentenced to two years isn't feeling so merciful. Because they still have to go to prison. But after two years, they're walking out. Instead of 15. Does that make sense? Did, did you feel that? That's what mercy is. Getting what you don't deserve. And God, and Jesus says in this text, for they will be shown mercy. So when you mess up, Slipped up there myself. When you mess up, God has the ability and the uh, just God should sentence you to something. He should, he should punish you because of what you did. Does he do that anymore? No, he doesn't. God does not punish anybody for their sins anymore because Jesus paid for the price on that cross. Now, I know that's going to get some teachings or whatever else, but that's okay because I'm the one in the pulpit this morning. So, here's the deal. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for our sins for past, present, and future. Agreed? Amen. Now, does God allow the natural consequences of sin to continue? That he sure does. Because he wants us to grow desperate for him. He wants to know how much our sin has, 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 has injured him, if, if you will. So he'll allow the, the natural consequence of sin. So if in the, in, in the event of the person that's standing in front of the judge, they stole something, the consequence would have been 15 years. But, God, but the judge said, no, I'm going to give you two. That's mercy. But there's still a consequence that they have to go through. Amen. They still got to do two years in prison. And trust me, that's not, nobody wants to go to prison. But yet, what would happen if somebody did go to prison for those two years? Do you think they learned something? Sure they would. Because they're experiencing something they don't want to experience again. And by the way, because I do prison ministry, jail ministry, there's usually somebody in that institution that's reaching out to those people who have been incarcerated that maybe have never heard about Jesus before. And so that person might come up to them and say, you know, you're doing two years for stealing. So what do you think about stealing? Good or bad? No, it's probably pretty bad. Okay, let's not do that again. Well, how do I not do that again? Well, put your faith in Jesus Christ and he will lead you into righteousness. And so maybe that consequence and we can go on for hours and talk about different consequences that lead people to God. Or if you're a believer and you've sinned and, and you go, ah, oh, I'm convicted of that. Similar to when I was walking on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, was that a sin that I just didn't just sit down and be telling a person about Jesus? No, that wasn't really a, a sin. I mean, a, a, it's not written in Scripture, but why was I convicted of that? Because God had given me an opportunity. There wasn't any consequence for that. Except that my heart was broken. Because I saw somebody that was in need. And that is something that I can grow with. So probably the next time that I see somebody that's homeless, I might be remembered to sit down and say, hey, listen, here's 20 bucks. Go get yourself something to eat. Now, I deal with people all the time. They go, oh, you don't want to give them cash because they're going to go spend it on drugs. That's not my responsibility. If I give somebody $20 and hope that they will use it for what they need it for, then I've done what God has asked me to do. Whatever they do with it, that's on them. You make, does that make sense? So I want you to make sure that you, know, you, you can go and get a gas card or a food card and then give it to the homeless person. And then they, to, what they have to do is they have to take it and they have to sell it to somebody else. To get, you know, that's a whole... Let's just give them something to eat. Amen? We love, let's just pray for that person 
that you see even on TV, the people in Ukraine, the people who are in our backyard in Minneapolis, and maybe even Clearwater. I know that our food shelf gets visited quite, quite often because of whatever economic circumstances may be in. Are you praying for them? Are you donating to the food shelf? You know, you don't have to go and seek out somebody that's homeless. You can go ahead and send money to, to a missionary. There's a lot of different ways that you can help other people. So showing mercy doesn't just have to be going to do something, something for somebody right there. Now, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So does that come back to the question? Pure in heart, if I want to see God, I have to be pure. How does that happen? Fully satisfied in Jesus will lead you to purity. You know, we haven't talked a whole lot about purity in a youth group. I've alluded to it a number of times. But purity is to say, what does God want me to do with my body, my mind, and my heart? I think I told the girls, you know, wait a long time. Guys are just pigs, man. They just, you know, just wait, just wait for them. 40, 50 years old. <laughs> yeah. There we go, there we go. I figured I'd get one of the moms to say that, yeah. I'm just kidding. There's some really great guys. And we need to get more young people in here for them. Young men. So, I met my wife in church. And, and, I, met, and I had a, heard a, a pastor a long, long time ago. Um, and he was saying, and it was a really large church. And he's like, he's like, oh, you young guys. I know why you're here. You're not here to listen to me. You're here to find the next wife that you want. That young girl that you've been having your eyes on. You, what? That's why you're at church. And that's okay. And you young girls who came here, you're not here to listen to me. You're scoping out the boys that are in here. Thinking, okay, which one's going to be my husband? And I applaud that. Find a young man. Pay attention, though. Find a young man that is sold out for the Lord, who is fully satisfied Amen. in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So pure in heart means to be, like, I want, I want, I want you, Jesus. And, and, and I want my heart to be pure. I don't want to look at stuff that's unclean. I, I don't want to speak words that are, that are unclean and make people uncomfortable. I, 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 want, I want to do the things because of your compelling me to do, not because I have to do it. One of the things that, that I love about being a believer in Jesus Christ is I love to serve. There's no better thing to do in the kingdom of God than serve. Whether you're, you're playing music and singing on the worship team, or you're greeting at the door, or you're in the in the kids' ministry, or, or, or you're just, you know, picking up trash in the parking lot, whatever it might be. If you're serving because you want to serve the Lord in purity, not worried about the attaboys and all that kind of stuff, that is pure blessedness. If I, if I give somebody uh, something, uh, a card or, or, or some money or something, oh, you don't have to do that. I said, I know I don't have to do it. That's the beauty of it. If I have to do something, I'm probably not going to do it. That's just my rebellious spirit. And God's still working on that in me. Amen? Amen. Now most of you don't know me that well, so that's okay. But I do have a rebellious spirit now against unrighteousness. Not in a condemnation type of way, but to say, you know what? There's a better way to live. And the way to live pure in your heart towards God is something that we should all strive for. Something we're all compelled to do. Matthew 5, 9 through 10. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What's a peacemaker look like? Just somebody who works at the UN? Probably not. We won't go out of that political realm, will we? What does a peacemaker look like? He's got long hair, he's got a beard, and wore a robe. That's the best thing, person, description of somebody that you could go as a peacemaker. Why did Jesus come? What was one of the reasons that Jesus came to earth? To make peace with God. To be reconciled 
with God. And what did he do to do that? He stepped into the fray of humanity. He stepped into the fray of humanity to make peace between us sinners and a holy God. That's what a peacemaker does. A peacemaker steps in between a quarrel between two uh, people and, he's, and he or she says, you know what, let's hang on right there. Let's, 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 let's put a pin in that one. I hate that phrase. I don't even know why I use it. Let's just stop and think about what we're talking about, what we're arguing about. What's the barometer that, that, that I use? Again, thanks for asking. Does it glorify God? Does the discussion that you're having that's getting heated glorify God? Are you in it for your victory? Who wants to win an argument? Everybody wants to win an argument, don't they? Husband and wife, I'm going to win that argument. I don't care what it costs, but I'm going to win that argument. And at the end of the day, of course, my wife is always right. So, <laughs> you learn through things like that. But when you're in an argument, when you're, who's, what, is you, what are you arguing about? And what's the solution? Are you, are you trying to get to a solution? Or just trying to win? Jesus had a solution. You know what it was? Two things. Love the Lord your God with all your might, all your heart, all your soul. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. What would happen if everybody loved their neighbor as they loved themselves? Will we have a war in Ukraine? No. Absolutely not. Will we have ish, all the stuff that's going on in Washington, D.C. or in our state capital? No. No. I've said this many times. Uh, and until everybody in leadership becomes a believer in Jesus Christ, we're always going to have wars. We're always going to have stuff that we got going on. So are you praying for your leaders? What was one of the other things that, that Jesus said? Love your enemies. Now, I can't say that the leaders in Washington are my enemies. It's certainly a lot of them don't have their, their, their things lined up with the way that I think my, my kingdom would look like or God's kingdom would look like. But you know what? They can get there. Can't they? Yeah. They can get there. Maybe you're always praying for them. Peacemakers. People who are willing to step into the fray and say, what does God want from us? And how do we glorify Him? And then those who are persecuted because of righteousness, because of your standing in Jesus Christ, you might be persecuted because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the kingdom of heaven is, is given to people who are fully satisfied in Jesus Christ. And people see your good works. People see your continence. And they see your, your satisfaction in Jesus. And they want that. And they don't have it. So what do people do? They make fun of you. They call you names. Jesus free? Thank you very much. That's my best Elvis impression. Well, so. <laughs> that's what you should be saying. Thank you for noticing my desire to follow Jesus. I'm sorry it offends you, but that's okay. Because Jesus offended everybody. <clears throat> Especially those who didn't know the truth. In order that they would seek the truth. So if somebody calls you a, a specific a Jesus freak or something, yes, he, you know Jesus isn't a freak. I might be because he is holy and he is and he is so cool. Coolest guy ever walked the planet. Guaranteed, you will not find anybody else cooler than Jesus ever. You'll know that when you see him. I know it. I mean, just, just read the scriptures, just read the gospels, and you'll see this guy's really kind of cool. He drew crowds. He fed 5,000 people. That was just the guys. And then all the women and children that went along with it. Is that cool? Now, in our culture, somebody decides that having long hair is cool. My son has a lot of long hair. I see a lot of guys with long hair. Now, that goes way back to 50s and 60s, maybe? I, I don't know. 
I love the new house. Oh, yeah, I was born somewhere in there. And they decided it was cool. And then somebody decided that plaid pants and plaid shirts was cool. How wrong is that? <laughs> no, we're not going to have a 70s day at youth group. Not, you know, I wore jammies to the one deal, but I'm not, no, I'm not. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have planted that seed. But you can be persecuted for a lot of things because the culture says, well, this is right, this is wrong, this is cool, this isn't cool. And I kind of come back and I, and I kind of look at it and go, you know, all the fashion stuff, that's great and everything. You know, but I want to be persecuted because of my love for Jesus. Amen? And you wear your hair whatever you want. You wear whatever you want. And you worship however you want. We talked about this last week. Um, when we were in youth group, we played a couple of worship songs. And sometimes I have my hand in the air. It's not because I want to ask a question. It's just because the Spirit is moved in me. Does that mean that I'm more righteous than anybody else? Absolutely not. God doesn't care about how you worship. He cares about who you worship. From your heart. No, my church, we wear shorts. I wear shorts when I preach. Well, you wouldn't do that in some other churches, and that's okay. And here's the deal. So I, I tell uh, my, my, my guys and gals, I said, listen, if somebody comes in in a three-piece suit, they're uh, um, a Fortune 500 senior executive, and they walk into my church where we've got leathers and all kinds of stuff and bikers and all that, and they come in our, and and... Do you look at them any different than you look at who the other? You see that? You know, somebody came in here, earlier, that homeless person that I saw on Hollywood Boulevard would have come in here and they smelled and they had rags on them. What would you guys do? Would you allow them to come in here? Would you welcome them in here? Yeah, yeah the youth is going, absolutely. Because that's what Jesus would do. And the person that came in in a, a $5,000 suit. <coughs> Would you welcome them in here? Absolutely. And everybody in between. Because we're not the ones who persecute people because they're not like us. We're the ones that say, let me tell you about Jesus. Coolest guy I ever walked the planet. So the last two. Matthew 5, 11, 12. Blessed are you when people insult you, insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, says Jesus. Not because you're not fulfilling the law, not because you have the right clothes on, not for any of those reasons, but because you're living by the truth and you're fully satisfied in who Jesus is. Fully satisfied in him. And then he says... And this would probably knock everybody off the trail. Rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm supposed to rejoice and be glad if I'm persecuted, if I'm insulted, if people call me names? And the answer is yes. Absolutely. Because two things happen. Number one is God gets glorified. And number two is you're walking the path that Jesus wants you to walk. If they can't tell the difference between you and an unbeliever, there's something wrong. Doesn't mean that you're better than an unbeliever. It just means that you're saved. Amen? Amen? And when you're saved, you're so grateful for what God has for you. You're so grateful and you're so satisfied that it doesn't matter how much money is in the bank account. It doesn't matter if I'm wearing the right clothes. It doesn't, none of all the earthly things that God talked and Jesus talked about, it, don't, it doesn't matter. For Jesus said, don't worry about what you wear and what you eat. For all these things are going to give, be given unto you. But first, seek His kingdom and His righteousness. And when you do that, 
You'll be poor in spirit and you'll mourn. And you can be meek and you can be merciful and you can be a peacemaker and you can get persecuted. But it's all worth it because we're going to see God. And the kingdom of heaven is going to be ours. Isn't that great news? That's what the gospel is. So I want you to take that with you home today. I'm to bring the worship team back up here to close in that song before I bring the benediction. I want you to think about what can I do? Who can I be? And how do I get to be fully satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ?
So as you see, we have a plethora of phones here. Again, please take your phone and not the one that's really nice. So, Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you that the youth are, are developing that hunger and thirst for righteousness. And as they become satisfied in you, Jesus, and not only the youth, but everybody that's here and everybody that was out listening to the Facebook realm. Father, today as we, we go about our day, let us not lose sight of who you are and whose we are. For you are worthy. You are worthy to receive all power, honor, and glory, Jesus. And we thank you. Thank you that you've given us the ability to meet, to mourn, to seek righteousness. And then when we're persecuted, to say, yes, thank you that you noticed I love Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.